Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John. Hello, hello, hello. John Mariani, the virtual gourmet and world traveler and fabulous author. You've got something like 12 or 13 books in print. But my book. favorite, believe yeah. it or not, is this one. It's the Dictionary and now called the Encyclopedia of American Food and Drink. I love this book. Oh, wait, wait, wait. My, is... favorite, my favorite is the Encyclopedia of American oh. Food and Drink. Oh. What's your favorite, John Mariani? Mine is the fifth edition of the Encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> and the latest. Okay. So what, what is this edition since it's a dictionary? Well, we just decided to change the name to Encyclopedia because it was good. Originally, it started out as it was just going to be a dictionary with um, definitions, and so forth, but it, it got more and more expansive, and I, went, I was just becoming fascinated, and American food culture was becoming more interesting. So by the third or fourth edition, we started to expand the, uh, the citations, and by the time that this fifth edition came out, I also added... Uh, biographies of uh, great foodies, um, authors, food authors, um, oh. people, uh, who were from Thomas Jefferson, agrarians, and Luther Burbank, and Julia. Oh, Ch that's great. I want to get the new edition then. Mm -hmm. I, I, one of the things I love, John, about this is, um, and I, I recognize that this should have been called an encyclopedia right in the beginning. It's got, uh, it's got, Everything. It, first of all, it's got definitions, which is you would expect from a dictionary. Uh, but it's also got recipes. It's like hundreds of recipes in here, mixed in with the uh, with the definitions. Plus, one of my favorite things is this: <laughs> you include slang, lunch counter slang. I think I've marked it. Yeah, I would have to put my glasses on, but basically, lunch counter slang is like four pages. <laughs> and I did not exhaust the topic. H.L. Uh, Mencken uh, had a lot of it in his book uh, 80 years ago, and I just really, had... I, I just, uh, you know, of course, I'm familiar with things like seaboard. You know, Stella yells out to the kitchen to Max in the kitchen, "See, make that seaboard in to go." Yeah, tuna, um, tuna it's, down is it's a, a tuna fish yeah. on toast. I used to be a short order cook, so uh, you've got wonderful, wonderful stuff in here. But my question for you, John, is so this book is about what sixteen years old was. The, sixteen years ago, you you published the first variation of it. Did you just at some point decide that uh, every time you ran across something that was maybe new, you made a little note on it? And all of a sudden, you had these hundreds of uh, cards of maybe of stuff that you'd seen. And uh, is that, how did this uh, idea for this uh, germinate with you? Uh, it came out because uh, I, I had the idea because Craig Claiborne, the formidable restaurant critic uh, and food writer of the New York Times back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, wrote a column about they put out a new edition of France's La Russe Gastronomique all that French food, identifying French food. And he says, why don't we have such a book for American cuisine? So I said, you know what? I'm going to write it. <clears throat> so I went to uh, my agent and publisher and said, yeah, it, it's about time. So several people said, no, dictionary, was it going to be like hot dogs and hamburgers? And I said, no, it's going to go from A for armadillo all the way to Z for Zinfandel. And it's probably going to be about 400 pages long. The current edition is 500 pages long. This was back in 1982. And uh, when it came out, I'm happy to say that everything from Library Journal to the New York Times uh, gave it rave reviews. And it became, um, I'm happy to say, the standard text, the Merriam-Webster for American cuisine. And uh, only one other book, which I forget its name, uh, probably a American gastronomy or something came out in two volumes, which I, of course, bought, of course bought um, and didn't find it nearly as thorough or comprehensive as uh, my books were. So I was very happy with that and the way um, 
it's uh, it's the the reason it was updated was because it needed. It first came out in 1982, as I said, and then it needed updating. Um, it went into paperback in another two years, and then about another five years after, because constantly uh, terms, trends are being uh, invented, created. When I wrote it, there was no such thing as nouvelle cuisine. When I wrote it, there was no such thing as the Mediterranean diet. Uh, there's no such thing as um, many of the dishes we take for granted uh, today. And just as you said, I started out with cards and tearing things out of newspapers, and and that's how I did it. Just the way Noah Webster and Dr. Samuel Johnson did all these slips with paper. Um, you know, I still have the file cabinets behind me, by the way. When the internet came in for the last two editions, I mean. That is enormous, helpful. So by if I had if I wanted to look up the origin, let's say hush puppies, before that I would have to go to standard dictionaries and then I go to reference books which say when did hush puppies first appear in print? But what is the real recipe for? Well, if you type in hush puppies now, you'll get 20, 30 different citations, not all of them dependable, <clears throat> but there will be enough um, uh, in there. Um, and some of which have used my own book as a citation. If you go to Wikipedia and uh, look up uh, various things, they will cite moi um, as their source. So we're all washing the same hands at this point, but it's enormously, enormously. I, mean, I could have written this book during COVID and never gone out of the house because of the internet. I give it credit for that. And Wikipedia, very good source. Yeah. Well, one of, uh, one of my favorite things, and I think this is what makes it a great reference guide, is you include a bibliographic guide in the back. I mean, you've got pages and pages of source material. You want to? You want more than just this? You've got pages and pages of uh, bibliography. Just wonderful. Really, a great resource book. But That's more than that, it's fun. We keep it on the coffee table, and it's fun to just open to any page, and you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get a, a definition of a food or a little history. Uh, this is everything's filled with history and um, and fun, fun recipes. It's just wonderful. Just wonderful. I'm opening to any page right now, just randomly. We start off with a biography of John Egerton, a great Southern food writer. And under that is egg and how our eggs differ from the world's eggs. And then there's a cream, and then you turn the page, there's a Benedict, and yep. then the selection cake, and El Presidente cocktail, and Emmeline sauce, and espresso, and English muffin. Um, yeah, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's a great read, <laughs> which is something you don't ordinarily say about an encyclopedia. Right. Well, I, I intend it to be very readable because there are oh, encyclopedias, by definition, are not supposed to have much of the author's personality in it, but I didn't care. It was my my encyclopedia. So if you go to the Oxford Dictionary of the English Language or Merriam-Webster or something, it's just solid information, one word after another. But there are no there are no jokes in it. I mean, I'm not making jokes to make jokes. I'm I'm finding funny things like the lunch counter slang, like Adam and Eve on a raft is two weeks old. Right. Um, so I, I try to have some humor with it. Yes. Well, John, you look good. You're frozen on my screen. But you sound great. And I, I suggest that everybody go out and get their version of the Encyclopedia of American Food and Drink and uh, have it on your coffee table. And I always like holding on to a real book anyway. So thank you for this and for uh, any and, and your wonderful novels. And I think that if people will go to johnnariani.com where you have your virtual gourmet newsletter. Uh, it'll just be a wonderful treat where they can see all the books you've published and to read some of your novels, which are really wonderful. So thank you, John. There's more of me to love out there, yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.